Yo, I'm Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. I've got some tips for you across report visuals, across some DAX, and we've got some updates. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos we crank out. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. All right, let's dig in. Reza Rad's got a blog post where he looks at conditional formatting inside of your report. And the way he illustrates this is through how to find the biggest number and then flips it around and says, how do we find the smallest number and then numbers and then goes from there and walks you through how you can set up conditional formatting on your tables. The one thing he points out, and I've got to agree with this, is that if you have a table, you should be using conditional formatting because this helps your user identify the values that you want them to see with ease. If you wanna learn more, check out the blog post down in the description below. I've got links for all the items in this week's roundup, along with some bonus items, so go check it out. Reed Havens over at Havens Consulting's got a video for you looking at report page tooltips. This is an awesome feature. I definitely recommend you check this out if you haven't seen report page tooltips before. They can really enhance taking kind of crummy tooltips or just not exciting tooltips and making them more meaningful. So check out this video, it's over on YouTube. I've got the link up above, down below. Go check it out. Marco Russo's got a blog post looking at how do you display your filter context in a tooltip inside of Power BI? Now you may be asking, why do I even care about that? It can really come in handy when you're trying to figure out what is actually applying for this given area of a visual. It can be very helpful when you're trying to craft your DAX statements. The more you know about filter context, the more you're gonna be able to actually create those DAX measures with ease and at least understand the output that's coming. Or better yet, why is it broke? Like, why does the number not even look right? So this can definitely help you out. I know I'm gonna be checking out this approach more because I have to help people with DAX from time to time. And this can really make the process easier with understanding what's going on. We got a blog post introducing template apps inside of Power BI. So template apps are pretty cool. The idea here is that you want to publish an app like you normally would, except you're actually gonna create it as a template app. This template app can then be published to App Source for other organizations to consume. So you can create your curated dashboards, reports, data sets, package those up, put them out on App Source for other folks to actually consume in their environments. This can be really handy, especially for like ISVs or if you're providing a service of some kind and you want reports to go along with that service, this could be something that's useful for you. To maybe give you an example of what template apps are, take a look at the premium capacity metrics app. So this is an app where it's available for all tenants out there for Power BI, and it helps you look into the actual capacity metrics of your premium capacity or your Power BI embedded capacity. So this is an example of a curated dashboard report data set that's available for all tenants, but it's going against a single data source and allows you to see what's relevant to you. So check out the blog post down below for more details. We got a blog post highlighting the updates for the Power BI developer space in January of 2019. There were a bunch of items that were included with this. The big one is the, or at least the big one to me, is the service principle capabilities for the APIs. So this means that I don't have to actually use an actual user in my tenant. I can use a service principle instead. So this helps me with a lot of flexibility, right? I don't have a named user that's part of this. I don't need a pro license. I don't have to worry about MFA, all of these things. We also got APIs for schedule refresh and we got APIs for content within a Power BI app. So that's pretty cool. There were also updates around actual embedding. So you could actually apply themes through the theme API. You can also clone visuals now through some APIs, pretty cool stuff. And there were some updates for custom visuals as well. So if you're in the developer space, definitely read this blog, see what all the new things are that came in the month of January. Again, links as always down in the description below, along with links for all the items in this week's roundup, plus some bonus items. Check it out. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item in this week's roundup? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. For me, I've got to go with Marco Russo's blog on the filter context in a Power BI tooltip. I'm, it's just the nerd in me. I like it, but I want to know what you think. So let me know down below. 
If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.